The football forecast is back. We've got a new layout. We've even got a tactics board behind, but I'm going to confess it's not interactive. Don't get too excited. Harry's with me. Kim as well. Let's start with predictions. New season. Names left, right and centre going around about player of the year already. Probably the hardest prediction to do. But let's start with Erling Haaland. 63 goals and 13 assists in 66 Premier League games. He's your boy. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think we had quite a lot of conversation about it last year, about him not being on top form. He was injured for quite a large part of the season and was still top scorer. I think Man City actually, in, in an attacking sense, probably underachieved from what, the, what we're used to from then, particularly from the treble winning season and the, the, the past sort of four or five years. And he's still... He still got the golden boot, and I think that says a lot about it. I expect City this year to play slightly more direct as well. I think when you look at the wingers that they've got at the moment, you've got Doku, who has been electrifying. You know, he comes on the outside, he puts crosses in. Same with Savino, the new signing. So all of those avenues seem to lead towards Haaland, maybe more than more than in recent years. I think also the departure of Julian Alvarez means that City will be focusing a lot more on him, and I think. He didn't go to the Euros. He will have been upset about that. We know how much love he has for the mm. Norway national side. He's had a whole two months, really, off. He looks absolutely electric in pre-season, although pre-season is pre-season. But I, I really do expect him to hit the ground running. I think City, apart from Chelsea away, first game of the season, have got quite an amenable first few fixtures. And Haaland loves to kind of get those early goals in August and September. And I think... If he can, and if he can stay fit this season, there's no reason why he won't win Golden Boot, and there's absolutely no reason why he can't be Player of the Year. A good point there about two months off. I think, like, freshness-wise, he comes into this whilst everyone else is tired, and we know how dangerous he is, we know how quick he is, and he's one of these guys that I think a lot of people are going to back. Yeah, I think the, the narrative around him last season was quite strange. Everybody was so focused on maybe what he doesn't do so well that they almost forgot to talk about all the brilliant things he can do. The goal return is incredible, 63 goals in 66 Premier League games. It's no surprise that he's uh, four to six in terms of the odds to be top goal scorer in the new season because, you know, he whenever he gets chances, he invariably takes them. I know people have made the case that maybe he should score more in that team, but I think when you're a focal point like he is and, and when you know that Manchester City want to find him in the centre of the, the penalty area, you're going to pay particular attention to him. You're going to put two men on him. But I think he's physically perfectly built to play in the Premier League. He's shown that already. And I expect him to continue in the same vein. I, I, I know what you mean about it being a bit of a kind of weird conversation that happened around him last year where people were focusing on the things he doesn't do. But there is there is sort of the argument to be made with Haaland, especially when it comes to player of the year. Like Golden Boot is a completely different award. You win that on merit. Player of the year, you kind of win by what other people see in you. And I do think that Haaland probably... But one of his negative aspects of it is if he doesn't score, he doesn't play particularly well. Mm. And there were lots of games, particularly towards the end of last season, where you were watching him and even against Spurs. So he scored two goals against Spurs, which is basically like a final in the game that won City the Premier League season. He was terrible in that game. You know, he had like three touches, I think, in the first half, something like that, 13 overall. So when it comes to play of the season, I can understand why people might not rate him quite as highly as other players like Phil Foden last year who shines and he passes the eye test doesn't he whereas Haaland's like just sort of that's to do with his particular style though, isn't stats it? man yeah. though, isn't it and I think I think that's kind of the only thing that would that's kind of the only thing that would probably detract him from being player of the year is just his style of play isn't that exciting despite the amount of amazing goals he gets it's, this, it's a funny problem with Haaland like as football fans now we're driven by stats he yeah. provides you stats, but then there's there's always a counter argument of like I want to enjoy watching him as well. I don't think Haaland scores as many goals as he does if he's fun to watch. Um, like the next player on the list, Cole Palmer, is someone who's fun to watch. Scored a lot of pens last season, uh, 22 goals and 13 assists in 29 games he started. Great stats overall. Incredible. You like watching him play football, but I don't personally see him as like someone who could win Player of the Year because I don't think he'll ever achieve like what he achieved last season was astronomical. He's I. Take it from me. I don't think he's scoring 22 goals this season. No, I completely agree with you. I think that the bar he set last season is is one that he's going to find very, very difficult to hit again. Um, he's playing in a Chelsea side that weren't very good last season, which meant that he shone through that little bit brighter. It's not to take anything away from him, but Chelsea weren't in a great place for most of the season. Felt like they got things right. Now they're going through a period of change again. New manager. How's he going to be used in a new team? Mm. So I think it would be a risk 
to say that Cole Palmer is going to be the player of the season. Has he got the talent? Yes, of course. Has he got the ability? For sure. Um, but, you know, a lot of his stats, in my opinion, were padded by the penalties. 11 pence. And, and you know, I, for me, that's not always sustainable in terms of maintaining those numbers year after year. It's interesting because I think the last debate that me and you had on this show was about Cole Palmer and it was about should he have been player of the year last year and can he improve or did he just shine because Chelsea were poor and he was sort of the best the best player in that system. I honestly think that he will improve again this year. I don't know what's going to happen with Chelsea. I think mm. we don't know what Enzo Moresco is going to be like. We don't know how he's going to be able to manage the players that are already there and the new players who are brought in. But you see Cole Palmer and he's not phased by anything at all. He comes on in the Euros final and he scores a goal, mm -hmm. almost takes it to extra time and he doesn't look bothered. And I think he's always the most classy player on the pitch. I know the stats were padded by, by, by penalties, but 22 goals and 13 assists can't be laughed at and when you are so enjoyable to watch and when you're still so young and the weight of the entire team was on his shoulders if Chelsea have bought well or if the players who were there last year can improve and they can help him around that I honestly don't see any reason why he can't get you know better. what's interesting I think both of you make really good points but I think because he was the main man like that's why I think he ended up in this situation Enzo Mareska's style of play is very different he doesn't build it around one guy yeah. so now Chelsea might become a more cohesive network which might mean Palmer has to take on a more cohesive role last season there was times where he was dropping into midfield going just give me the ball like when, you know when they played um, City I think yeah, it was yeah, yeah. And he was in like holding midfield when, when it was 3-2 or something and I was going what is going on um, we'll move swiftly on because there's plenty of names on here William Saliba, take the floor, because this is uh, he's a monster of a man. I don't think it's wild to say that he's the best centre-half on earth at the minute. I don't think it's crazy to say I'm that. I'm to leave the room. <laughs> I, I don't think it's crazy to say that. I, I, I can accept that there are arguments for other players, for sure, but on current form over the last year, maybe a bit longer than that, William Saliba's just been unbelievable. He was great for Arsenal last season. He was great this season before, which was his first in the Premier League. Um, he took that form into the Euros as well, and it's interesting that going into the tournament... Many people thought he'd be on the bench and he managed to force his way into Deschamps' plans done brilliantly. You can see that Arsenal are a much better side with him in it, even in pre-season, that's been noticeable. He came back into the side for the Bayer Leverkusen game earlier in the week and Arsenal just looked so much more assured, looked like they're willing to play five, ten yards further up the pitch because of his inclusion. And I just think he's a transformative player. His calmness, his physical attributes are there for everybody to see. Technically, he's sound as well. And he seems to be really, really composed in all situations. So there's a good chance that he could be the, the player of the season. I mean, people would argue that he's been Arsenal's player of the season for the last two. So mm -hmm. why couldn't he be the Premier League's? It's hard to win... Uh any trophies or any individual trophies as defenders they just don't get appreciated yeah. mm. um, but if Arsenal do win the league like there will be Saka there Erdegaard he'll be in there Vrijs it'll be very very interesting Alexander Isak kind of like it's pretty rogue shout 21 goals in 27 starts last season he had a very good season yeah. um, I always feel like the team that wins the league will probably have the player of the year what does he need to do if, if he wants to be in this conversation? I think Newcastle need to get into the top four, which I don't think they'll do, which is why I don't think he'll be in the conversation. I think he's a fantastic striker. I just think that, especially as a striker, you have to do more than other strikers in the league. And I don't think he's above Oli Watkins. I don't think he's above Erling Haaland. Well, Oli so Watkins is on this I list think, as well. Yeah, so I think, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for him to win it. I think, you know... He's an amazing player and we've, we've seen it. We've seen what he can do. Even take the goals aside, we've seen some of the assists that he did. I think it was at Everton maybe last year where yeah. he just beat like five players around the wing. Like he's an absolutely superb footballer. But I just think that you, it's unlikely that a player in a team who's probably going to be challenging for Europa League, potentially Champions League spots, will win it unless he massively outscores the rest of the competition, which... I haven't seen enough from him to suggest that he can do that. And that's no disrespect to him. I just think compared to his counterparts of other teams, I'm not sure if he's better than them. Well, Watkins is on the list. Uh, 37 goal involvements. Uh, it, it, it saw, I, I actually read that on here as probably overcooked last season. I agree. I feel like it was uh, his stats are probably something that he may never achieve again. Um, but he's in, in the conversation because he was unbelievable at the Euros. He had that magical moment. Uh, and I think out of him and Isak, he probably scores more goals next season and that might elevate his chances of winning player of the year. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that Villa will be in a stronger position as well, which obviously helps. I think Unai Emery has done a lot of good for Ollie Watkins on an individual level. There's a story going around about 
how sort of when Unai Emery arrived, he looked at Watkins as someone that liked to drift left and right. And he sort of said to him, look, focus on playing within the width of the penalty area and you will score more goals because there's often situations where you're out drifting and you miss the opportunities to arrive in the box and stuff. And he's worked on that and he's got into a position where, you know, he's, he's getting the opportunities, but he's also taking them as well. I think Watkins has come on leaps and bounds in the last two or three years, but not being at one of the traditional big clubs and probably not being in a side capable of winning the Premier League probably means that he's going to find it very difficult to be player of the year. The last name for me, people are talking about Ballon d'Or, give it to him. Yeah. Rodri, for me, should win the Ballon d'Or. For sure. It's his uh, win rate at City, by the way, in 236 starts, he has won 190 games, 80% yeah. win ratio. He's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and people look at that stat and they think, oh, well, it's Man City under Guardiola. I mean, obviously, they're going to win the majority of games. All you have to do is watch a three-minute highlight of a game that he's not starting. <laughs> it's horrible. And you'll see that Man City under Guardiola is Man City under Guardiola with Rodri. Yeah. That's why we've won so many titles. That's why Man City managed to win the treble. He is the most important player to the best team in the country. And that in itself, you would suggest means that he probably should win a player of the year. I'm surprised he hasn't won more individual accolades. I think what we saw in the Euros as well, he's just as important to Spain and they're all there praising him and giving him a guard of honour. I mean, you don't really get that unless you're a truly, truly special player. He's won everything there is to win. I don't see why he hasn't won more individual awards. I don't see why he hasn't won the Ballon d'Or. I think the only thing that could potentially stop him from winning this award this year or maybe actually just being slightly worse than he has been in previous seasons is the fact that he plays every single game mm. and has done for the last three years. I mean, City's signing of Calvin Phillips was supposed to alleviate that pressure. That was a disaster. It doesn't look like they're buying any backup for him. So it's likely that once he comes back into the team, he's going to be playing another 60 games this season. And I don't know how he can physically yeah. manage to do that. The fact that he has already is just another plus point of why he should win the Ballon d'Or because his, the fact that he's managed to play that many games at that level without getting too fatigued is just absolutely incredible. Uh, very quickly, uh, who do you think is going to win the player of the year? Oh, God, it's a tough question. I think Cole Palmer. Oh, really? I'm going to go Rodri. I think that's a sure thing in terms of looking at that list. There are players that you can make a case for. Um, Haaland, you can obviously make a case for. Palmer, as you mentioned. You know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't put Izak there just yet. Yeah. Um, Watkins I'm not sure about I'm not sure how Villa are going to do coping with Champions League and Premier League football and all the other domestic competitions too Rodri's the, the one I would bet on if I was looking the at it. the thing this. is the fact that he hasn't won it for the last three years yes. he should have won it and the fact that he's a holding midfielder just makes me think that if he's not going to win it if he's not going to win it already he's probably not going to win it this though, year that's the only thing do you think the fact that he won the player of the tournament at the Euros and that got Why put into people's minds now means that people are going to look out for him more than your more traditional choices of forwards and wingers. I, I think he will. He won everything and he still didn't win this trophy. Yeah. And I feel like maybe the time for him to win it was last year or the year before. Yeah, I Because agree. was it last year? I think it was the year before last year he started scoring goals as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, so, he, he scored the winner in the Champions League yeah, final yeah. in a treble winning season and still didn't get player of the year. It's like, what, how what, much like, more can what you more do, can really? Man do? Like, he needs, there need to be centurions and, and he needs to score 20 and, goals. And, and, you know, with this award, I do think it's very much based on what you want to see in a player. And that's yeah. why I mentioned Cole Palmer, because he does pass the eye test and he gives you the stats. Yeah. It's so exciting. Uh, very quickly, we'll have a quick look at the breakthrough players. Uh, there's quite a few very interesting names on here. I'm going to start with one that I really like. Uh, Jakuba Mint, uh, Minter from, at Brighton. 10 goals, 6 assists at, at final last season. Signed for a pretty hefty fee. And the reason I'm backing this... It's because Brighton don't make mistakes in the transfer window. Like very often, they're going to get a player and immediately you go, where have they found this guy? Um, I really like him. I think it'd be very, very exciting. Him and Matoma either side. Matoma's another one. Like They signed him and everyone was going, oh my God, Like where have they found this guy? Um, Arsenal have a player that you think might be interesting? Yeah, Ethan Wanieri is a really, really interesting player. Um, he became Arsenal's youngest ever Premier League uh, appearance maker at 15 years old. Uh, away at Brentford and they've recently signed him down to a professional contract they had to wait until he turned 17 to be able to do that there was some speculation around whether or not he'd stay at the club they managed to keep him and he's been a big part of the pre-season and I really do think that this is the year that he becomes a part 
of the first team squad. Am I saying that he's going to start every week? No, but I certainly think you're going to see him come off the bench playing the cup games. And I think in Mikel Arteta's mind, and he certainly won't want to say it publicly and put pressure on the lad, but I think he sees him as the long-term cover for Martin Odegaard, which is a big statement wow. because of how good Martin Odegaard is. But Wanieri, talent-wise, he's on the way. Uh, I think Stefan Bajcetic had that period when he got injured. And when he first came on the scene, I, I was so convinced that this guy was going to go to the moon. Um, then the injury happened, but now Liverpool have a position for him to play, uh, potentially as a six or a right-sided eight or a left-sided eight. But he's one of those Spanish players that like gets you off your seat, even though he's a midfielder. It reminds me quite a lot of Thiago, and I think everyone loves Thiago. So... Um, yeah, some very, very exciting names there. Let us know in the comments who you think will win Player of the Year. And if there's any other players that you think might be breakout talents, then drop them all in the comments below.